Hi there, it's August the 17th and we are concluding the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah today with the chapter 12 from verse 27 and all of chapter 13. So the walls of Jerusalem have been repaired and in chapter 12, 27 and the rest of chapter 12 there's an amazing celebration of the dedication of the walls. Now one thing to note here, interestingly enough, is that this reading opens with the Hebrew word Hanukkah. Uh, we know the word Hanukkah connected with the Jewish festival of the Hanukkah that remembers the rededication of the temple at the time of Judas Maccabeus. But the word here, Hanukkah, refers to the dedication of the wall and it's used a couple of times. And so that word means dedication, to give to God. And so this is something that is uh, a feast, a festival before the Lord, something that is going to make the city separate. It's going to give the city over to the Lord. And it's very much celebrated with, uh, with music and with dance and with expression. Uh, it's interesting that some of the instruments that are mentioned are those that are mentioned in Psalm 150 and elsewhere it's also mentioned that the instruments of David were used. So there's again a connection, not just that people are bringing any old instruments, but actually there's a connection with using instruments that were seen as sacred, that were seen as uh, used, used in the worship of God. And so the, uh, the, the people who come gather at the western wall of Jerusalem, they gather on the western side of the wall, and they're divided into two companies, two sections. Now it's interesting that the word in Hebrew that's used for these companies is the word toda. And that's just simply the Hebrew word, even the modern Hebrew word, for thanks. And so they're divided into two thanks giving, two thank you groups. And these two groups, these toda, these todot, are going around the walls. Now one group goes uh, from the western wall, heads south, goes on the southern wall, and comes back up the eastern wall. The other group goes north and along the northern wall and comes back down the eastern wall and they meet at the eastern wall and from there they meet up together and they go into the temple celebrating worshipping singing and it's very interesting that the singers are considered as uh, alongside the priests and the Levites and so they are also provided for they are given provision uh, they're given support uh, so that they can continue their work. As we'll see a little while later on, um, this is something that has to be maintained. And so, with joy, the people of Israel celebrate the completion of this work and bring it to the Lord. And the book of the law is read, the book of Moses is read, and uh, it, it, it's a celebration uh, of, of the completion of this work. Now, moving on to the final chapter of Nehemiah, chapter 13, we know that the story of the Israel, the people of God, is of a constant cyclical behaviour, that they come to God, they repent, they they, they come in good relationship with him, and then things slide. And chapter 13 is kind of an account of some of those things that slide. Nehemiah, after the dedication of the wall, it seems Nehemiah had to go back to Shushan, to the, to the king of Persia, who he was serving, remember, as cupbearer. And while he's away, in this period of time that elapses, certain practices happen which are not pleasing to God. They're not glorifying to God. Uh, one of those things that happens is that Ammonites and Moab, Moabites are intermarrying or they're becoming part of the, the Israelite company. And Nehemiah says that in the reading of God's word, they are finding that Ammonites and Moabites are not to be intermarried with. Uh, and one of those Ammonites is actually Tovia, uh, Sambalat's servant, who gave them so much trouble earlier on when they were trying to rebuild the wall. Now it turns out that Eliashib, the, the, the priest, has actually made space for Tovia to keep stuff in the storerooms in the temple. Maybe there wasn't, maybe there was some room left over. But Nehemiah is incensed that here uh, a man who has caused them so much trouble and who is an Ammonite is keeping stuff in the temple. And it says he literally threw their stuff out, uh, threw his stuff out and, uh, and, and, and cut him off. There's also the problem of the Sabbath keeping and what they're finding is that people, people from Tyre, people from other places who are not Jews are coming and they're trading on Saturdays, they're trading on Shabbat, on Sabbath. Uh, 
and uh, and so Nehemiah has the city gates shut uh, just before Sabbath begins on Friday evening, and they remain shut until Saturday evening, until the end of Shabbat. Even then, there are traders who are coming and setting up their stalls outside the city, and Nehemiah actually threatens them with violence, says, if you don't stop doing this, I will lay hands on you, and actually they stop doing it. So Nehemiah is seen as one who is seeking to put back the uh, the, the, the ways of God, and actually it, the, the chapter is interspersed with prayers that say, God, remember me for what I've done here, seeking to bring back uh, your, your right ways to the people. Then another thing that is, uh, we've already seen that another thing that is, is addressed is the uh, the intermarrying with uh, with non-Israelite wives, with non-Jewish wives. And uh, it's even found that the, one of the relatives of the, the high priest uh, has married the daughter of Sambalat. You remember Sambalat, who was the ruler uh, at one time of this area, and it's found that the, the, that, he's bit, that the priestly family is intermarried with with Sambalat, and Nehemiah actually expels the priest who's been responsible for this and 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 sends him away because he's he's making the the whole priestly line impure. And then we also see that uh, because people have not been bringing their tithes, they've not been bringing their offerings, the first fruits, that the priesthood themselves are not being able to be maintained. And they are actually working out in their fields just to maintain their livelihoods. And so Nehemiah again puts in place the bringing in of the tithes, the bringing in of the offerings, so that the priesthood, and not only the priesthood, but also the Meshorim, the singers, and the Shorim, the gatekeepers or the stewards, are also maintained. This is something that's for Nehemiah is very important. Uh, it's not just about the buildings, it's not just about the walls, it's about the service of God in the temple that needs to be going on. And this is how the uh, the book of Nehemiah comes to an end when Nehemiah has come back from service with the, with the Persian king and he's put back in place the things that need to be in place for the people of God to be holy. It's so often the case that the world is seeking to, to squeeze us into its mould and to co-scheme us to its agenda. But we are encouraged, as those who follow Jesus, not to allow ourselves to be schemed into this present world. We're constantly having to reevaluate. We're constantly having to look at what we're doing so that our love of God comes first, so that we're putting him first, so that our bodies are being given as living sacrifices. Nehemiah is a wonderful example uh, of the people of Israel doing that, led under this amazing man whose name means the comfort of God, the one who God, through whom God brings comfort. Have a very good August the 17th.